This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Investment property, IS40. Can you remember from those glory days of F7 uh, what investment property actually is? Yeah, it's a property that, that you hold for investment purposes. It, that is technically correct. Uh, so let's break it down into the two constituent parts, investment and property. Property is land or buildings, isn't it? Or, or part of a building. So when you're looking at land and buildings, you need to determine whether or not it is property, plant and equipment or investment property. Now, what distinguishes land and buildings from being PPE and therefore being investment property is that that land or that building is held to either earn rentals so you own it under an operating lease and you lease it out to somebody else or it is held for capital appreciation purposes so you have land or buildings you've got a little bit of surplus cash to invest in some land and buildings maybe in london because that's very wealthy and, and the property prices seem to go up and up and up and therefore you can make some nice gains if you've got the money to invest within the property market in london if that's the case Again, it's land and building. It's not PPE, because remember, PPE is looking at land and buildings for your own purposes, isn't it? So using them maybe as your head office or using it as a factory. Here, investment property uh, is an office building. It could be land that you use to rent out to somebody else, uh, or you bought it with the aim of getting a gain on it when it comes to disposal. So the, the fancy term is capital appreciation isn't it key bit uh, is that it is not used in the production or supply of goods and services for admin purposes so essentially that is if you like uh, for administrative purposes it's saying look you are not using it as your own head office okay uh, it's not land and buildings so maybe housing uh, that you're looking to sell in the ordinary course of business so maybe you sell houses uh, so you're a house construction business. Again, that would be more IS2 uh, as opposed to looking at investment property. OK. Uh, and also as well, the key one there is that maybe you are still constructing your building uh, and that will be used as an investment property in the future. So if it has a future use of investment property, it's not investment property until it's complete what you use there is you use IS-16. So follow the normal rules of IS-16 with regard to the construction of PPE. So looking at your purchase price of all the materials, looking at the directly attributable costs of getting it into its location and condition ready for use. So in terms of labor costs, uh, any design costs of the building. Uh, and then once it's complete, once you've got the cost, that then forms the cost as it then moves in to investment property. OK, excellent. So again, hopefully we're getting the theme in terms of initial measurement, subsequent treatment. Again, initial measurement, similar to what you have on IS-16, is cost plus directly attributable costs. So when you're thinking about land or buildings, you're thinking about any property taxes that you have to pay on purchase of the land or of the buildings. Uh, when we go through that and subsequently measure it, we have two models, don't we? The fair value model. And the cost model, cost model, bit dull, bit uninteresting. It's exactly the same, isn't it, as IS-16. Capitalise it at cost and then depreciate it. OK, if you want to be really picky, uh, if you have an investment property and measure it under the cost model, why you do that, you know, is, is a bit beyond me. But let's not worry. Uh, you would go through there and disclose the fair value. OK, so within the notes, the back of the accounts, you would disclose fair value. But I wouldn't worry about that too much. Uh, under the fair value model, much more relevant, much more, if you like, widely used. You know, if you are looking at buying land and buildings with investment potential and holding it for capital appreciation purposes, then what you're going to go through and do is that you value it to fair value at each reporting date. Okay. Uh, then once you've got that, 
any gains or losses, remember, are taken straight to profit or loss, aren't they? Okay, because the assumption there is that there is a market available to be able to dispose of your property and therefore you can make that gain or loss pretty reliably and pretty readily uh, if you were to dispose of it at the end of the year. Clearly you're not, but that does then mean that we are taking it still to profit or loss as opposed to storing it up within other comprehensive income. Again, other key bit, hopefully you remember, is that if you're treating it at fair value each reporting date, gains and losses to profit or loss, do not depreciate it. Okay, uh, nice and simple. Uh, the final bit of investment property before we go through and play around with a bit of an example is going through there and looking at the changes that you have with regards to investment property i.e. maybe it was an investment property, so it was treated as IS-16 or under, if you like, IS-2, okay? And then it moves into investment property or vice versa, okay? So you can effectively split it down the middle in terms of those four bullet points, okay? The first two are whereby we had investment property. So it was land, it was buildings, or if you like, part of a building that is then moved over to owner occupied again key bit there is that if it was investment property whatever it then is subsequently you go with the fair value at the date of the change in ownership or the date of the transfer into inventory okay the gains and losses go to profit or loss and then whatever the fair value is for your is 16 that is then depreciated okay the inventory at IS2, that is then, if you like, the cost of the inventory when you're then valuing it at the lowest cost and net realisable value. OK, so the key bit is that if it was investment property, then get it up to fair value, treat it under IS40, gains and losses to profit or loss, and then treat it under the new standard. In the other two, again, key bit that you've got there is treat it as normal. Uh, under IS-16 and IS-2. So I think the main one that we focus on is IS-16. Again, what you would do there is before you transfer it, revalue it under IS-16. So what that then means under IS-16 is that any gains go to other comprehensive income. And then that up-to-date fair value is then the new value of your investment property. And then subsequently, any gains or losses on fair value go to profit or loss okay so again whether it's going from is 16 to investment property or is 2 to investment property get the correct value first and then go through uh, and adjust it under ias 40 gains and losses uh, to profit or loss okay uh, so what we've got the little example talking about investment property and change of use uh, it says again explain so narrative maybe supplementing it with some numbers. The accounting treatment of the property uh, in the financial statements for the year ended December 2015. Okay. Uh, so it says Adlington owns a property that it is using as its head office. So that will be there as IAS 16, won't it? Property, plant and equipment. At the 1st of January 2015, its carrying value was 20 million and its remaining life was 20 years. So we could depreciate that 20 million over the remaining life of 20 years, couldn't we? So is that there 1 million per annum? Uh, 1st of July, 2015. So just be careful. That is mid-year, isn't it? Six months into the year. The business was reorganised. Cheaper premises were found for use as a head office. So we have moved out. So therefore, we decided to lease the property under an operating lease. So it was IS-16, it is now IAS-40, okay, from the 1st of July 2015. So six months as PPE, six months as investment property. Uh, it tells us the property was valued by a qualified professional who said it was 21 million on the 1st of July and 21.6 at the reporting date. So what have we got? Well, whilst it is there as property, plant and equipment under IAS 16, uh, what we've got there 
is that its original cost was 20 million. Be careful on the depreciation because, yes, it's 20 million divided by 20 years multiplied by six twelfths. Okay, that's something that particularly in, in a numbers aspect question, say within question one, whereby investment property might get examined as part of a group scenario, that's where the examiner might try and catch you out. So that there is 0.5 million. So the carrying value is 19.5 million. Is that there on the 1st of July 2015? That property then needs to be revalued upwards. I think it was to 21 million. So if that's the case, you have, is it 1.5 million as a gain? So I'm pretty sure that it was 21 million, wasn't it? And then 21.6. Yes, 21 million at the 1st of July. So you get a gain of 1.5 million and that gain of 1.5 million goes to other comprehensive income, doesn't it? OCI, because we are looking at things under the revaluation model in IAS 16, okay? So we get everything correct before we then transfer it over to investment property. So investment property is there, isn't it? As IAS 40. And when you have your investment property, What's going to happen there is that at year end, the fair value at the 31st of December 2015 is equal to $21.6 million. So that goes to the statement of financial position. And then there is a gain, isn't there? I think it's 0.6 million because it's now valued at 21.6 when it was 21 million and that gain goes to the statement of profit or loss okay so on the SFP you have the fair value at 21.6 and the gain in profit or loss is there's 0.6 million okay excellent there you have it uh, the only other thing that I would potentially say is just be careful uh, when you get investment property within a group scenario. Uh, imagine uh, the, the parent and the subsidiary. Uh, let's just say that the, one of the relationships that the parent and the sub has is that the parent has investment property that it leases out to the subsidiary. So let's just go through there and say that, look, uh, we've got, if we put it in a more appropriate colour. We've got the parent, we've got the sub. And then within the parent's books, it has land and buildings that it leases out to the sub. Okay, so in the parent's books, then what you have there is that the land and buildings in the parents books will be IAS 40, won't it? Okay. Legally in the parents books, it's land and buildings because the parent is leasing it out to that subsidiary. They are, remember, two separate legal entities. Just be aware, however, that if we look at it from a group, perspective yes the parent is leasing out the land and building to the subsidiary but the group is using it for its own purposes isn't it so within the group accounts be careful in the group accounts it would actually be treated as is 16 so it should be capitalized at cost and depreciated whereby in the individual accounts of the parent it will be there based upon the fair value model so the fair value at the reporting date and gains and losses to profit or loss. So there could be some quite complex adjustments there, removing all the IS40 treatments and then replacing it with the IS16 treatments. 
but I think that's just pushing it a little bit far. Okay, if it crops up within the exam, have a go. I wouldn't spend too long upon it and I'd move straight on. Other than that, that's it with regards to this chapter. Uh, we'll go through within the next chapter and begin then to start looking at your intangible assets and a little bit more revision, if you like, from the glory days of F7. So I'll see you all in the next chapter.